Southport Square residents. This is your Executive Director Brian Hess with another episode of Around the Square. So I'll start off as always with our COVID update. Right now, the Department of Health's website is showing the state still at a 13.7% positivity rate and Charlotte County at a 15.9% positivity rate. So again, that two week cycle, we haven't seen any updates over the last two weeks. Um, by next week, we should have a new update for you. Um, but we're still kind of looking in that high range right now from what the Department of Health has um, posted. The CDC is um, still showing us as yellow or medium um, within Charlotte County. And right now their percentage, which is a much more current uh, percentage, is a 9.32% positivity rate. So it's come down a little bit uh, since the last two week update from the Department of Health um, through the state of Florida. Unfortunately, uh, we are seeing the community transmission levels at a higher rate right now. So the CDC is saying the transmission level in the community is a red or high. Now, I did also hear from somebody that has an in at the health department that there were some folks that came back from a cruise that were in Charlotte County and there was some pretty significant um, numbers uh, of folks that got off of a cruise that had some COVID outbreak. And so that may have um, kind of spiked in the county for this week because we had not really seen that um, in the last uh, week to two weeks. And then all of a sudden we saw a really high spike of um, total number of positive cases. Um, it still showed a, a low positivity rate, by, but a high number of cases. So it looked a little unique and odd, and that could be um, one of the reasons why. But we'll continue to monitor this, and hopefully by the next week or two, we'll see those levels drop back down to kind of the norm or what we've seen as the norm lately. We currently have no positive residents and no positive associates on our campus. So that's great news that we've continued uh, in that you know, progression with not having COVID on the campus. So a quick update on the hurricane and some of the rebuilding and work. So the blue team, um, we uh, met with the blue team and the insurance company here on site at Southport Square this week. So they all came in from different parts of the country and uh, came here. We walked the building, we had conversations in my office. You may have seen us around on property, but uh, anyway, it looks like we've made um, significant strides. They are expecting that within the next week, they'll get the final approvals and sign offs from the insurance. And um, they, are, they do expect that the county will um, release that permitting very quickly after the insurance gives the approval and they trigger the county to move forward. Um, they will be working on the interior work first. So all of the resident apartments and interior common area spaces that need to get updated, that will be kind of the first thing that they focus on. We do anticipate that uh, probably within the next two weeks, I'll be able to roll out our schedule of when we're gonna start and which you know, areas we're gonna hit first. They do anticipate that it's gonna be about a 12 week process to get all of the interior work done. While that is all being done by a blue team crew, um, they will also simultaneously be working on things like the roofing, uh, the lanai's, the windows. Uh, there will be some painting taking place across the campus. So there's gonna be quite a bit of work that's gonna roll up into this. Um, through the blue team. And so all of that will kind of be working um, simultaneously together. Uh, we do anticipate that uh, probably somewhere in the six to nine month range for all of the work to be completed. That is including the painting of the buildings and the uh, roofing of the buildings, which will be um, a little bit larger projects for us with lead time and materials and labor. And then of course, um, working through the summer with the rains and things like that, there will be delays. So as we get a little bit further along, we'll get some better schedules together and we'll notify you about the upcoming work of when it's going to start and how long they anticipate being there. But that's about where we're um, sitting right now. Rolled up in that also will be fencing and electrical across the campus. So all of our ex exterior lighting uh, posts and things like that, and all of the fences that were destroyed in the storm will be um, uh, worked on about the same time. Our landscaping company, Mainscape, who I know you all see here every week as they're mowing the lawns and taking care of the property, uh, they are still uh, working on getting us the final design layout for the campus. Um, I anticipate that within about a week or so. And once we have that, we'll be kind of um, looking at that with them and seeing if we want to make any modifications before we give them the go ahead to start that work. Um, that'll be including things like putting replanting uh, probably another 100 to 150 trees here on the campus. Uh, in various locations, as well as um, redoing some of the mulch beds and hedges um, that were destroyed uh, during the storm. 
Uh, also, our Gables East renovation, uh, progressing uh, wonderfully. I know we've been meeting with the Gables East residents every uh, other week right now. We'll continue that until the renovation is complete. Uh, there was a little bit of a delay in the carpet, so um, they're seeing we anticipated the carpet to be here this week. They are now saying it could be as far as two more weeks out before they get that delivered. So that is obviously going to be a little bit of a delay in getting the construction work completed. They are still working with the carpet manufacturer to try to get that um, wrapped up and shipped um, and delivered to us as quickly as possible. Uh, we don't have an exact um, time frame on that, but that's the best guess by the carpeting manufacturer at this time. So uh, with that, uh, we are looking at probably the end of March as a final uh, wrap up date for construction um, and then into June for the furniture to be delivered uh, is what um, the timing looks like at this point. And then the last piece I just wanted to tell you, many of you uh, probably saw on the news um, in the last week or so that uh, uh, the county has approved for FEMA to come in and put some uh, trailer sites in two different locations in Charlotte County. One of them being in the, um, the vacant property adjacent here to Southport Square on the corner of Kings Highway and Westchester Boulevard. So as soon as we heard about this um, plan to go there, I have reached out and spoken with a county commissioner as well as the sheriff here in the county and um, started uh, kind of our, our steps in making sure that if we do have neighbors there, that we are um, set from a safety and security standpoint, uh, visual, um, you know, keeping some kind of a tree um, buffer there. Uh, so we're gonna do everything we can to limit the impact here to the campus but that will probably be there within the next couple of months. We will start to see activity over there, probably some property being cleared. I am waiting on a contact with FEMA from the county who has um, said that they would make sure they give me a contact there so we can start conversations with them. And the sheriff is available to um, assist and, and talk through any additional needs that might come up um, as we move forward. So I will continue those conversations and make sure that uh, that you all as residents here have that comfort level of you know having a neighbor there and where we're at um, in the future as they uh, will be there for up to two years at this point is what the county commissioners are looking at. So um, as soon as I have more information, I will make sure we get some communication out to you all as residents so you kind of know what the game plan is or what we know the game plan is and how it will impact us here at Southport Square. So anyway, with, uh, without any further ado, here's the rest of the episode, enjoy.
Here I have a little plant on my desk and it's on a little terrarium. And this is something that Charlie Bro Rose brought down. Um, it looks like it's seen better days. It does not like the lighting in my office. I do not have any direct sunlight. And it seems to be getting kind of moldy. Yuck. And look at all the fingerprints on this from everybody picking it up and being fascinated with it. But uh, this little thing, needs to be rescued so let's take it to the doctor hang on little plant help is on the way let's go get the doctor charlie this is your garden right here look at this you're like the electric gardener <laughs> <laughs> so this whole light up system that you have um it, it it's like a, a greenhouse it is. And uh, certain plants need a lot of humidity and others. So these plants are hanging. Mm -hmm. You see, this that area is 45% humidity. Oh. And this globe is 77%. So oh. these, these need more humidity. More humidity. So, uh, and less humidity. And then uh, down here, uh, this is... 49%. Wow. It just stays wet. There's water in this tray and it's this capillary matting. Oh, so, so they water from the bottom up? Right. Oh. See, see, they have they have wicks and so it stays on here and they get Oh, watered. isn't that neat? And uh, Now what got you into this type of growing? Uh, I don't know. I guess I this was uh, it, uh, they're clubs and stuff. And I right. got into it years ago. Yeah. And, uh, uh, wow, these are interesting. Now, these aren't all orchids, are they? These these are all orchids. Are not, they? Not this. All of these are a form of orchid. Uh, except this. These, except that. That's a begonia, the yellow flowered one. Mm hmm. But they require very high humidity. And these are the little uh, syringes, like. Uh, like the patient you brought back to me. Right, the patient will I'll, be I'll uh, put into the hospital and, there. <laughs> and uh, they uh, they are his uh, young seedlings oh, that just, just started from seed. Mm -hmm. And here, this one's getting ready to bloom already. Wow. And now, do these plants normally grow so tiny? Do they Are they normal yeah. miniatures yeah. in yes. nature? Yes. From oh, Bra okay. Uh, mostly from Brazil and Africa. Oh, okay. I didn't know if you were and, taking and a regular plant and making it small, no, like no, a bonsai they, or they, something. They grow that way normally. And uh, they, they also... Oh, look at uh, that. A lot of these get... Uh, these were spindly because they were left at my house when I was when I moved here. Right. And I I thought they would die, but I salvaged some. Right. But but then I brought them back here and they're coming back. Mm -hmm. But yet what I will do with all those because I don't need that many, I'll cut the tops off them, the growth, the leaves and stuff. Mm -hmm. and there's a little bulb. And I put the bulbs in the plastic bags, and when they start growing again, I sell them on eBay. Ah! And I get, they get, they get I don't know, between twenty and thirty dollars for them. Really, you get twenty or thirty dollars per plant? No kidding! Wow! I need to start hustling some plants so, now. Going on, so this is really impressive, and this is a heck of a hobby that you have and it's a fun hobby to you. Yeah, yeah. Like you find it very relaxing and you get to I learn up to about everything. Out there to the field and dig up. Yeah, you don't have to go outside, I, yeah. I, I, I roll out of bed. And <laughs> yeah, you don't even have to put on sunscreen. Look at you. Oh, so uh, so with this, um, look at that, how cute. <laughs> They're cute. Now the, the, the patient that you gave me is in a little box like that. Right. Uh, what are those boxes called? I mean, other than just a box, is it a humidity box or uh, is it terrainium? Yeah, no, they, they're just, uh, they, I buy them in the 
the closet store. The stuff for storing stuff. Oh, you just stuff. found that they work good for your right. mini plants. Right. Oh, okay. All right. And then I find clothes like this too. Well, yes, at your orchid presentation, you were talking about the different types of right. containers. Right. Now, the container makes a big difference on where you, how your plant is it growing. It does because, well, like you can see, these are 46% 40 humidity, which is... That's a nice a, day. A little low. <laughs> but, even though these are open, that's seventy eight. Right, because humidity. it's keeping air, a lot of the air in right. there. Yeah, so that's nice. So going back to your um orchid presentation that you did uh recently uh -huh. and you had a big attendance. You're gonna be starting a club, aren't you? Yeah, yeah so yeah. we'll get into that a little bit more. But those um, uh, containers, uh, those are the ones you're suggesting to people to grow the orchids in? Because right. they keep it, the humidity? It, it grows as many, but if we, 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 the club is going to cover all phases of orchids. Because people grow different ways, and they have different conditions. I get no direct sun in here. Right, right, and maybe, right. And now I haven't, haven't been here all year. Maybe a certain season, the sun will come in here, I don't right, know. Right, right. But some people have sun like almost all day. Right. So they would have to grow different than I would here. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're going to try to teach people oh. and learn from people. Not right. Only, not only teach, but learn uh, at the same time. Yeah, so, yeah. Very interesting. Uh, Very interesting hobby. So how long have you been doing this? Almost fifty years. I fifty guess. years. <laughs> you're all. Years, you're anyway. yeah. As they say, you're only forty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, something interesting too. Uh, a lot of people like the bigger plants. As you can see, I'm already into miniature. Yeah. Here's an orchid that's in bloom right now. I don't know if you'll be able to get this on camera or not. But there is a flower, an orchid flower. Well, hold on, let me try right, to zoom. Right there at the end of my oh. finger. And there are some more buds. Oh, on wow, it. look at that. How tiny is that? <laughs> Sheesh, look at that. That is the time. Is that, a, what kind of orchid is that? Oh, well, it's a, it's a, 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 a a party steel Apollo. <laughs> oh, yes, I knew that. I, 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 it was right on the tip of my tongue. I knew that. <laughs> wow, that but, uh, is pretty but, neat. But, I mean, this to me is a treasure. Yeah, I mean, yeah. That nature produced. That is pretty darn neat. Uh, Look at that. Look. So do you ever take them out of these little Dixie cups and put them on display, like in there? Would you take it out of the cup, or you would just leave it in well, the cup? You know, it could, it, well, I'd leave it in that cup, but mm -hmm. uh, again, sometimes this this is one that uh, is going to bloom. It's got a whole lot of little buds on it. Mm. And, uh, See, I would be afraid to these touch get, this. These get big. Yeah, these, here's the but these get bigger flowers than oh, that, wow. but still small. But this is that I have to say this is the cleanest, least dirtiest uh, <laughs> gardener gardening area that I've ever seen. Uh, uh, this is so interesting. And then, then things that need what more humidity. Than mm -hmm. I, I, I built this thing. I just made this out of glass and plastic. Uh -huh. I keep them in here. They, they're ninety. 95% humidity, humidity, yeah. Because it's sitting on this wet pad. Ah. And, uh, yeah, that wet pad, that's a neat, that's an interesting uh, feature here. That is neat. Well, thank you for sharing that. You have another thing. Now, you had an, a very interesting career, yeah, didn't you? I did. And what was that career? Training racehorses. Training racehorses. Look and, at that. And this is my... Look at this. Alidor Alley. Alidor is one of the famous racehorses. Uh-huh. And in fact, he was hooked 
he was running against a horse named The Firm in 1978. Mm -hmm. And A Firm won the Triple Crown, the Kentucky Derby, the Preakness, and the Belmont. And Allie Dahl was second to him in all three races. Mm. And that's the only horse in, the, uh, the, I don't know, 130 years, whatever, however long the Derby's been run, that's been second in all three races. Oh, wow. So there were really and, three, and, two and, triple crowns that year, and, huh? And that race, was it was named as one of the top 50 sporting events of the century. Oh, wow. So, to be involved in that. Yeah, and that was your now, horse, huh? one of the major players. I wasn't the head trainer, I wasn't the jockey, but he wouldn't have been there if it wasn't for me. <laughs> You're so modest. You're uh, so modest. So who do we have here? A painting of the race. Yeah. The Belmont. Belmont Stakes. There's the actual photograph of the finish of the race oh. with Joe, both jockey signatures. Here is a, this is a, get a, little a, bit closer here. a, a painting in the Kentucky Derby Museum. And it looks oh, look at this! Boy, that <laughs> looks similar to the guy that I'm standing in his living room. I mean, how, wow. many, people, how many people are in the museum before they die? <laughs> This is very true. <laughs> you made it to the museum walls without even dying. Good for you. <laughs> uh, uh, there was a magazine cover that I was on. Wait, this is you? Yeah. So you were a jockey also? Well, that, that was for training purposes. Oh, I yeah, I guess you I had to get on the horse to train it. I was a jockey it. very briefly, but I outgrew it. Wow, and is that, that you too, hugging yeah. that horse? Yep. Yeah. Oh, wow. Isn't and that neat? Some of my international stuff. See how uh, at, at Royal Ascot and the Chester Race Course in England. And wow. Interesting. Like and, uh, I, I think you're the very first uh, horse trainer I've ever met. Uh, you know, yesterday at the, the uh, event for the. Uh, New people here. Oh yeah, the class reunion. Uh, I met a guy who was a pilot, and he used to fly the horses, and he knew so many of the same people. No I knew. kidding. I can't remember his name. Oh. Before, but we became friends, and I'll, I'll connect with him a lot. Oh, before. that's wonderful. Yeah. Oh, how what a small world, huh? Mm -hmm. What a small world. And I may have flown on. Some of the planes he was piloting. I don't no know. kidding. I was flying around with horses. Yeah, you'll really have to compare notes. Yeah, yeah, you'll really have to sit back and compare notes. Wow. Now, when did you retire from that career? Uh, it would have been in uh, uh, 95, I think. Oh, okay. After almost 50 years. Mm -hmm. uh, there was... Uh, I was working for some big stables at, at, at Calumet Farm, which is like... Was the I've biggest, heard that name before, Calumet. Yeah. And that was who owned Alley Dog. And uh, they had... Uh, 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 the owners died, the original owners, and it was left over to... Uh, uh, somebody who married into the family, and he took over and ran the thing into the ground. Ah. And this, there was a book written about the, the tragic fall of Calumet Farm. Oh, <laughs> so, no. So I could see what was happening, and mm -hmm. I quit. I, you were like, I'm I, done. I got out, and I had reached an age where I could retire mm -hmm. or I had job offers, and I've been hemming and hawing, and Pat finally said, you know what, either retire or go back to work. <laughs> quit telling me about horses. Right, right. So, now, did you ever own any horses yourself? No. Nope. Did you ever own horses no, yourself? No, 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 really? No, that's a risky game. No, no I, oh, I, I yeah. can afford that. Now, let's tell the truth. Being a horse trainer... I'm sure you can understand the mannerisms of a certain horse. So, did you did you I make any you winnings? Yeah, because I know I would have definitely been uh, putting in my uh, bets. Yes. 
and, and I had a definite advantage in uh -huh. that regard because, as you said, the manners. An example, we had a horse that I used to ride every day. The horse had a bad back. Mm -hmm. You ever had a bad back? Yeah. You know what it's like. Mm -hmm. He would run, he was, ran listless, he wasn't right. Then all of a sudden, one morning, I would get on him, and he was a different horse. Mm. And he stayed that way. A few he was days, having a good back and day. Going a race, and then nobody be betting on him because he'd be a good price because he had a bad performances. Mm -hmm. But then, <laughs> and nobody knew it but me. Yeah, <laughs> so, and so you would be, so, make some so, money off of that horse, right. hey? So you know. The, the, that's interesting. Hey, but you have the inside scoop. Why not use but, it? But again, a lot of people in the business, they can't resist thinking that they know more than they know. Mm. You have to be very careful and wait. Be patient. Mm -hmm. you, you can't make the horse. In your mind, you're making him better than he is, but you can't do that. Right. At the end of the day, it's still a horse. Yeah. yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> now, Charlie, I'm looking here about the um, interested in orchids. So you apparently are not taking retirement lying down here. Well, you know, <laughs> you're always I, doing I, something. <laughs> well, I was. Before I got in here, I used to lay on the couch all day watching TV. Well, that's boring. At home alone, I mean, with Pat. And right. She was in the hospital and in rehab a lot. And I I was just waiting to... Waiting to go, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I came by here and I thought, let me check this place. That, that I, I, I didn't know... Yeah, because I, I Pat was at the rehab that was on the corner, right? Yeah, right. And you were driving over and to visit her. And, and you and stopped I thought, by. Well, uh, I thought like a, uh, a retirement uh, home was like a cheap motel or something. Yeah, yeah. And I saw this place that looks like a botanic garden. I drove in around clockwise. And I ended up over at the office. And I met Marjorie Johnson. Mm-hmm. Marjorie. Right. She spent the next three hours with me, and I got in the car, and I went back to Solaris, and I told Pat, I got a plan B. <laughs> <laughs> and the day she got out of Solaris, uh -huh. I brought her straight over here. Marjorie pushed her around three hours in a wheelchair mm -hmm. and showed her the place. Uh -huh. and we oh, that's wonderful. What and, a great story. And I've never regretted it. Oh. It's, it's like a, it's like we're rejuvenated. Yeah, yeah, and you have you you have your spark back. Yeah, yeah getting out yeah. and doing things. I mean, Pat's out yeah. doing things. Yeah. She's actually hiding from the camera, out <laughs> doing things. But she's still out doing things, and you've got your hobbies going. But you're about to start a uh, orchid club here at Southport, right? Uh, yes. Uh, uh, so look at you. Well, so uh, you are designing your own flyer. Uh, Did well, you do uh, this? Uh, well, I. I I, I did it, and then I showed it to Mita, Smita, and, uh -huh. and, and she she's giving you her amended things. it. And the, yeah. the, the, I'm impressed with your with your uh, flyer skills. <laughs> From one flyer maker to another, I am impressed. Yeah, I Look use, at you. Uh, I use Print Shop. Yeah, that's pretty darn nice. I don't have that fancy program. <laughs> I got to talk to Brian. <laughs> Now, you recently were interviewed um, by a uh, person that was doing a podcast um, because a book was written. It, it's not that book. Is it that book? No, no but it's, uh, it, it's related to that book. Oh, okay. Okay, that book, how I thought was after he retired, he was the leading sire in the world. Mm -hmm. He was the best. He was producing winner after winner after winner. And with the, the, that book was about Calumet and the downfall of it. Right. And how they uh, went, were going broke and they owed a lot of money to banks and so on. And Ali Dahl was a big money maker, but. Uh, 
he he broke his leg in the middle of the night. Oh. And insurance paid off, and they, they bailed him out for a little while. But it was always suspected that it was foul play involved mm. in that. Uh huh. So it's suggested in this book that I that I showed you, but uh, this. Uh, uh, the guy has become a friend of mine through this whole thing. I didn't know him before, mm -hmm. but he's writing a book. He's he's a lawyer in Gainesville, who lives in Gainesville, and he specializes in animal rights, mm. dog cruelty and stuff like that. And he got interested in it, and he was convinced that there was foul play and the. Alidair. Alidair thought breaking his leg uh -huh. and being, had to be destroyed eventually. Wow. So he wrote the book. So he, I had nothing to do with that part of Alidair's career, but he was very interested in the, the racing, everything about Alidair, and uh, uh, he Trying to get the personality of the horse, I would say, because yeah, you well, you were you were well, just telling well, me that they have different it, personalities. When I first met him, he told me that people he had talked to in the business said that if you want to know about Ali Dog, talk to Charlie Rose. Ah. So he came to my house originally and interviewed me, and then we talked on the phone a lot. Then he came here with all this equipment, and, and people at the other end, it, 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 I don't know where they were. They were. Yeah, you were doing a podcast. You were right. doing it on the internet. And then mm -hmm. they, they, they haven't published it yet, but they're doing editing and stuff. And there'll be other people on the at different, you know, it'll be mm -hmm. a series. Uh, Interesting. Uh, wow, so see, done. you've done a lot. <laughs> you've done a lot. You've even been on a museum wall. <laughs> <laughs> and what else all, you got over all, here? All my pictures oh, here. Oh, yeah. Look at that. that. That's all Saratoga Racetrack, which is the oh. oldest track in the country. Saratoga, New York. Yeah. Yeah. The oldest track in the country. And that's where I spent every summer. And that's where... Field of Dreams. A, a Saratoga Lake is right nearby, which is a resort area. And that's where one night I walked into a bar. Mm -hmm. And there was Pat. And that's been... 45 years ago. Oh, and you met yeah, her there. I'm 55 years. 55, yeah, you're being recorded. You got to be 50, 54 years, it'll be this. Summer. 54 years ago, you walked into a bar at the Saratoga Lake, Lake uh, area, and you met the woman of your dreams, and you married her. Yeah. Aw, what a sweetheart. Who would have ever thought we'd last... 54, she was 27, I was 38. Oh, that yeah, that's a, that's a <laughs> heck of an age difference. Yeah, well, well, uh, she probably saw something pretty remarkable yeah, in you. Yeah. <laughs> she knew that the, this man was going to be on a museum wall one day. Uh, well, she might have known that, but I, but I knew that she was the best person I ever met. Oh, <laughs> you're going to make me cry. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to make her blush. See, yeah, here's... What else you got? This was the night sky on the day Pat was born, the night that the world became a better place. Oh, look <laughs> at that. <laughs> Oh, Peekskill, New York, July 19th, 1942. Oh, how interesting. <laughs> Look at this collection of teapots. Look at that. I I've never seen a Mount Rushmore teapot. You know, that is the neatest thing. Look at these. There's a story involved with that one, too. We were at Mount Rushmore. Uh-huh. So she looked for teapots and all the gift shops around there. Yeah. And I said, no, there's no such thing. We came home and I was in the mall uh, here in Port Charlotte. Mm -hmm. There used to be a coffee shop uh, right by in the orange. Yeah, in the the food court. Right. 
And I walked in for get some tea or something, and there was this Mount Rushmore teapot. <laughs> You know, most people collect magnets of places they've gone, <laughs> and you collect a whole teapot. Yeah, that's what my refrigerator looks like. It's a it, it's a, it's a fun ransom letter and, of, and, of know, places uh, like that. Calumet horse that won the Triple Crown. Oh. In 1948. I Citation believe. is the name of the horse. Citation. I always found. You ever find that horse names are very peculiar? Why are Why is that? There's certain rules about naming the horses. Yeah, because nobody even just names their horse Skippy. <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, so, I wonder why they have... Do you know why they have those very uh, unique names? No, it's just whoever wants to name They can name it whatever they want oh. if they get approved. They have to submit it to the jockey club first. Really? And you have to so name your horse? They, that they can't... Name it suggestive things and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. so, but, oh, wow. But, Interesting. But, but when we... Calumet was really going down the tubes when we took over. And we brought them back to glory. And there's a distillery, a bourbon distillery in Kentucky where they all are. Mm -hmm. And in celebration of that, they gave me this... It's a flask of bourbon whiskey. There's whiskey in there? Yeah. I, hey, well, I, let's open I, up. I, I never let's opened go. It. I never opened it yet. Oh, wow. <laughs> How neat is that? So, uh, huh. wow. <laughs> well, I thank you so very much for the tour and the interesting conversations that we had. And um, I hope the patient gets better. Oh, yeah. No. Yeah. We're, oh, yeah. We're, we're he looks better. a little sick. He doesn't do well in my let me, office. Let me, get a, let me get another one. Oh, I get a refill. Oh, yay. He's picking some flowers here. Now, what is the name of this again? That, that, these flowers? It's a Syningia. Syningia. Yeah. God bless you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I get a new plant in a new container, and when this one starts to need some assistance, I just bring him back to the doctor. He uh, revives them and recycles them, gives them back. So thank you. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Around the Square, and I hope you have a wonderful weekend. Oh, Brian. Yeah? I have a joke for you. All right, I'm ready for the joke this week. Well, we're staying with, you know, there. You know, we, we covered um, the orchids with, uh, oh, yeah, Charlie. with Charlie. Yeah, Charlie. And uh, Helmet gave me some video from his iPad yeah, sure. of his garden before and after. So with that in mind, I'm going to tell you some jokes for that pertain to plants. Okay. All, All right. right. Let's do it. Let's hear All it. right. So, Brian... What do you call a nervous tree? I have no clue. A sweaty palm. Ah, ah sweaty, yeah. Sweaty palm. Sweaty I got them right now. I'm nervous. <laughs> Man. All right, uh, plant another one on me, Dawn. <laughs> plant another one. Yes, uh, you said you had more than one. So Can you, you put know, some sweaty on. palms out there um, yeah, on the we, tree line? I there? will make sure that we don't get any more royal palms. They will all be sweaty <laughs> palms going forward. So. All right, Brian, here's another question for you. All right, let's hear it. How can you tell when a plant is scared? I have no idea. How? <laughs> it soils itself. <laughs> All right. Very wah, good. Yeah, wah. yeah. Let's hope it doesn't take a leak, but that would be okay. <laughs> yeah, I hear those uh, gardeners, they, they are constantly wetting their plants. That, but this is true. <laughs> <laughs> Boom, 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 yes. All right, we got them. Man, we are just like rolling them out here. So, well, we always love to hear those uh, fun jokes. And if they're terrible, even better yet. So, That's right. Keep uh, them coming. Absolutely. So, we'll have a wonderful week, everybody.